Hey, it's me. I am in my car again. I'm in a parking ramp right now. I had jury. Look at my face. This is this is that foundation that I told you I bought the um <laughs> the, the uh uh what's it called? Bare Minerals Bare Pro Powder Foundation, and it's not controlling oil the way I want it to. I don't. It is 11, 11 a.m. I put this makeup on at about 8.30 in the morning. No, maybe about 8 o'clock in the morning. And I just, I don't feel like I should look like this. You know, in under three hours. I shouldn't be like that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, my friends are texting me right now. <laughs> because, so, I, I had jury duty today get out of these cars we are packed in here all right I get out this joint I think this way luckily they sent me to a courthouse that is only about eh, about 15 minutes from where I live um, I haven't had jury duty in a very long time and the other two times that I've had it they sent me downtown which is not close to where I live so I'm very happy to be near home but I'm gonna tell you what this system is so inefficient because they had me I had to be here by uh, nine I got to the courthouse at a quarter quarter to nine went in went to the the room where I was supposed to be they started giving us instruction at a little bit after nine and Right way. I'm always going the wrong way. Then like gave us parking passes and told us to go back to our cars and put the park the passes on our dashboards and that we had to be back in 45 minutes. And I'm just thinking, like, couldn't you mail the parking pass so we could put it in our car when we park? Like th this makes no sense. We're you know, we just got here, we're leaving again, we got a break, now we're back. So then we just sat in silence for an hour um, and then <laughs> some some people started talking and you know giving instruction and they called us up three at a time and there are probably a hundred people in the room they called us up three at a time where the heck am I we gonna find out together uh, I know I'm going <laughs> in the right direction I think wait where's Ikea over there Oh, I just want to go home. I <laughs> said, I just want to go home. I think I turned the wrong way, but <sighs> I digress. Um, they called us up about three at a time and told us, gave us, you know, some instruction, get your, get an orange thing with a number on it. Then they said, there are too many of you to fit in the courtroom. So we're going to take the first 50 um, and then we won't get to the rest of you until after lunch. And my number is 72. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you that or not, but I already told you. So <laughs> my number is 72. And uh, then I said, okay, those of you who have like 50 or higher. Oh, Lord. There's a detour. This is why I use GPS. This happens when I don't use GPS. Like, Places that I've been to a zillion times, I'm going to end up somewhere else. I just have no sense of direction, and it, it's annoying because I just want to go home and get back and whatever. So, they broke me for lunch for two and a half hours. Like, <laughs> it's just, uh, it just seems very inefficient. I'm glad. I'm in Burbank so that I can go home if I ever freaking figure out which direction home is because <laughs> I'm seeing stuff now I'm seeing things that I recognize but I'm seeing them from an angle that I don't normally see them from so I don't really know and I, I want to be over there but I'm not sure I see a freeway so I'm not sure how to get over there Hang on, hang on. Ikea way. Here, okay, 
mall district. I do know where the mall is. <laughs> that says something about me, doesn't it? I don't know where anything is, but I know where the mall is. It's like, I can't do math to save my life, but I can tell you how much 35% off is. <laughs> oh, I know. Okay, I know exactly where I am now. I went to dinner there last night at Black Angus, but I came from this direct, yeah, I'm, we good now, we good. I just made a wrong turn. Now, my friends were texting me. I was texting, you know, um, one of them sent a group text saying, you know, I hope, I hope all you ladies have a wonderful week. Uh, and so we started chit-chatting back and forth. There were about like six of us on this text thread. And I said, yeah, I'm in jury duty. Um, and, and uh, I took a picture of myself. <laughs> Don't I look happy to be here? <laughs> and and they're like, "Oh, you look good. You look nice. Well, thank you very much. Make you feel make me feel good this Monday morning." So when I told them I was leaving to go home for lunch, I said I should come back wearing a different wig. <laughs> and so and one of them texted, "Yeah, and you should have a totally different uh, speaking a totally different dialect, so they'll dismiss you." I think I should just bare my teeth and growl. When they ask me questions. You know what? I'm I'm tripping. I haven't been called for jury duty for a long, long time. Like I can't remember the last time I had to do jury duty. Uh, I think it was because I moved like three times in close succession, and I think they just couldn't find me. I don't know. Uh, but they found me, and so I'm doing jury duty. And I know it's important. Uh, as, as one of my friends texted earlier, she said, you know, I always think of like the Trayvon Martin case, how important uh, jury selection was to that. And, and it's true. Jury duty, serving on jury duty is very important to our uh, judicial system. It's just... And I've been told that this will be a long case. I'm not allowed to talk about what the case... I don't know what the case is yet, anyway. But, I, yeah. Once I find out, I have promised. That's one of the things I will not say. I know I say... Sometimes I say things I don't intend to say. That's why I have not done a live video. Uh, because I need editing. <laughs> I need editing. I'm not great at, at self-editing on the fly. I'm, I'm su subject to say just about anything. And, uh... I need to sometimes I just I need need a little time so I can edit and just you know handle up on myself and pull it together you know just like just like with with your job or whatever you have to do in your life if you don't have a job uh, you got something going on and it's it's inconvenient to be tied up and not know how long you're gonna be tied up you know, uh, I'm not thrilled at the prospect of not being able to audition or work. So we'll just, we'll just, it'll go the way it needs to go. And I'll just trust that if I do get on a case, it's, it's a jury that I need to be on. Like maybe it's, you know, it's something important. I will take my duty seriously. I found it funny that <laughs> that uh, in the jury assembly room, they have these these photos on the wall, like uh, framed photos of famous people who have have served jury duty. Like Kimberly Elise is on the wall. I think I saw Ed Asner. I saw um, uh, Edward James Olmos. His photos on the wall. Like just you know, like these famous people, <laughs> these celebrities can serve jury duty, so can you. Hollywood. I've been doing these, these chit chats in my car because I'm in my car a lot. Um, and if I'm in my car, I know I'm going to be in my car for however long and I know how much time I have. And, uh, you guys seem to like them. I asked and, and people have said yes. <laughs> and, and you're coming back to watch more, which I appreciate. And I don't feel... It's, it seems... It's kind of counterintuitive. It seems like I would feel more rushed in my car. I am a little more distracted because I have to... You know, I got to pay attention to the road first and foremost. Uh, 
and be safe, but when I'm at home, there are always 10 other things that demand my attention. And so it's like, okay, I want to do this video. And then after I do the video, I got to do this, 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 this. Whereas in my car, where am I going? You know, like, <laughs> what am I going to do? Read a book afterwards, write, write a letter, whatever. No, I'm just going to drive so I can drive and talk. Half the time, even when the camera's not on, I'm driving and talking anyway. Because I talk to myself. I talk to the other drivers, <laughs> they don't hear me, they don't respond. And when I talk to myself, nobody else in there responds. I'm, I'm the only. Sometimes I do respond to myself. Oh. I like talking to me. So the wig I have on today is Milan Girl. I think that's the name of it. Milan Girl. It's, it is one of my favorites. It's a half wig. Um, I've done a review on it if you want to check it out, but I love it. I love it. I love it and I really I like this color on me before I bought this wig in this color. I never thought I could wear a, a shade like this I thought it would be too light and I would look crazy now Here's something that I've, I've talked to a few people about growing up. I was considered dark-skinned Okay now, I'm hearing that I'm not because only people who are very, very, very dark skinned are considered dark skinned. So I guess I'm, I don't know what I am supposed to be right now. I don't know. But I grew up getting called black like all the time. Like that was, you know, it was, yeah, it, that was it. It was, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and even like offensive comments, um, like I should be grateful that I have good hair, which is a, a disgusting term as well, um, because I because I'm black and black used as a derogatory uh, statement. And I know those of you, those viewers who are black, understand this. But I am I'm breaking it down for non-black viewers. It's colorism, basically. The lighter skinned you are, um, the closer to white you are, you're supposed to be better. And that's some stuff, some ignorant stuff that was passed down, started in slavery because of treatment of, you know, lighter skinned, um, lighter skinned black people. And then the, the darker skinned black people were were not treated as well. Nobody was treated well. So it's like, do you want me to beat you with the whip or you want me to beat you up with my fist? Like, you know, like you still getting beat up. But it's that kind of thing. Um, I have a friend and she's Israeli. Like she was born born in Israel. She and her family immigrated here when she was a small child. So she grew up here. She was shocked. We started talking about, I started talking about colorism and she was just like, what? What? Excuse me, what? Like all y'all black, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, that's why it's so stupid. That is why this is so stupid. We all black. Um, it's not like the cops not gonna shoot you because you know, you have, 3A hair. I'm explaining that to tell you that I grew up getting called black, like, you know, in a derogatory manner all the time. Being black or dark skinned and wearing blonde hair, like, unless you get the right shade of blonde, that's generally, that can go real wrong put it that way so I never thought I could wear lighter hair I always did know I could wear red lipstick and fuchsia lipstick and stuff like that I wasn't but hair mm, I don't know but I like this wig <laughs> see a circle back around and somehow I had to work lipstick in there you know I did just about eating my lipstick. I just put on pencil and some gloss today. Mm, they're trimming the trees. All right, well, I am home. 
and I thank you for coming along along for the ride. Uh, I'll let you know if I get on a jury. I will not tell you about the case because I don't want to. I don't want to get myself in trouble. And I don't want to screw up. You know, nobody's. I don't want to screw up anybody's life. Um, I don't know what kind of case it is. You know, and I can't. Can't. I'm gonna follow the rules on this one. I'm not a great rule follow follower, but I will do what I'm supposed to do on this. All right, let me get this car parked and I will say goodbye to you. All righty, I'm parked. Goodbye and uh, I will see you again real soon, okay?